Okay, so um, as we were talking about earlier, um, we so we have all the, taxo all the taxonomies that are listed in JSON files and used in MISP, but they can also be used in other tools. Uh, right now, the way they look like, it's going to be like a JSON file similar to that, which is easier than uh, dealing with XML documents, but it's still like editing a text file, which is which can sometimes be kind of an asset. So, and to just look into it and find out what which taxonomies is already here and what kind of content do you have and so on, it's not necessarily super easy. Like you may want to have a way to just go through it without um, without having to look at the at a Python at the at some text file and uh, search in GitHub and so on. So. What I developed to just have an easy interface to dig into all those taxonomies is a small website um, that runs, like you just, it's just a Flask website, you can just run it locally on your machine. Uh, it imports all the existing taxonomies and dis displays them in an interface. Uh, so you can basically just click on a uh, taxonomy and see the content of it. Um, and if you go, like if you go for some bigger ones, like you just, you can just see all those indications uh, right away without having to dig into a text file. Which is, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, anyway, so like that, it's going to look like that. Uh, and you see at the end of the line here, machine tags, which is the same thing as what Andras was showing earlier. So you have all those information directly like in, in your web browser uh, and you can basically, you can go through it, like you can search, you have a really easy search interface here. So if I look for, for example, for, for TLP, I'm going to get the TLP uh, uh, taxonomy. If I look for Euro, I'm going to just find like Europol taxonomy and so on. So it's easy to just find out some indications on the taxonomies you have in your interface. Um, and you have some more information like the amount of entries you have in each taxonomy and so on. Uh, and then if you click on it, uh, you see all those informations. Uh, you see the version of the taxonomy. Um, and yeah, so you can, you can basically just go through that fairly easily. And the other interesting functionality is that you can do search. So if, for example, I want to search for ransomware. I, I have a ransomware and I want to, to know um, which taxonomies have it for ransomware. So I'm just going to do it like that. And I find out, okay, in the EC set taxonomy, I have description, I have a ransomware um, example. Uh, in ISA, I have the same. Malware classification, I have the same. Various, I have the same. So I can, it's easy, when you have one of those machine tags, one of those tags somewhere in your MISP instance, you will be able really easily, um, like in a, in, a few, in a few weeks, to just find out all the other um, similar tags you, you may want to add in the event or not. Because now we have a lot of tags, a lot of different taxonomies, so it's really easy, to, really useful to just find a way to get to map taxonomies with each other. Um, but to do this web interface, I had to develop a Python module that's going to load all your JSON documents into a Python dictionary. And I'm going to show you how that works because it's, it's really cool if you actually want to, um, to, to edit a taxonomy live or if you want to create your own. So you just do you load your taxonomy, so you, you import the, the class here, and then, so you import the taxonomy, those ones are going to be downloaded directly from the internet and loaded locally. You can also load a manifest file that is in your computer, but like, I'm going to just do it the default way from the internet. Then when it's done, you can get a taxonomy. For example, I'm going to get the circle taxonomy. So as, I mean, if you, if you write in Python, in Python, you will recognize that. It's just like taxonomies that get as in a dictionary. And then, if I do print, print circle, I get all the taxonomies, the machine tag of all the taxonomies, of all the other attributes in the taxonomy. Uh, if I want to, for example, if I do, uh, I do uh, circle dot, dot JSON, I'm going to get a dump of all the attributes of the taxonomy. And what is really interesting when, when I do that is that I can export, so I can create my taxonomy directly in my, in my command line and dump it as a JSON file and import it in MISP directly. So it's really, it's really straightforward to create your own stuff 
and it's going to be validated automatically. Like you have, you will have the JSON, the taxonomy that is dumped on your machine is something that's going to work immediately anyway. So you don't have to, you don't have to mess around to find out what is working on how to create this taxonomy. You can just, you can just do it like that. I will have really soon an interface, like a, an option in the web interface to do that. It's not working right now, so don't even try. It's like it's going to fail. But it's going to look like that at some point. You can just create your own taxonomy, save it, and then upload it in uh, in the MISP, um, in the in the GitHub project, or just keep it internally. But you will be able to create your own without having to edit any text file. Um, and something that is also really cool, for example, if you have, you have an existing taxonomy and you want to change something in it, so. Uh, let's say if I want to do in the description, circle.description, it's, as it's a Python class, it's really straightforward. If I change it, uh, description equals foo, and then I do the JSON, and I get description foo here. And then if I do, uh, if I dump it as an actual JSON object, I get it as a text as Python te as just a text object that you can import in this directly. So all that stuff is implemented on just working. On this way, you make sure that your taxonomies are working really cleanly. Um, and if you want to create your own taxonomy and make sure that everything is working properly, um, you should create the, so you create it here, and then you create the JSON file, you put it in the directory, and if you run the tests of the PyTaxonomy module, it's going to try to load the, the JSON file and dump it again. Which means that and it compares if it's the same thing on both ends. So this way you are really clear, you are sure that it's, it's really something that's going to work out of the box and without any hassle. So and all that stuff is like, it's there. You can just, you can just play with it right away. Um, so that's the idea for the, for the PyTax Um, right now it's, so it's available in, uh, on GitHub here. Uh, as you can see, code coverage is fairly good. Um, I had some fun there. Um, so yeah, and then if you just, like, you look at the code here, it's going to just load all the events, all the, all the attributes of, of all the, um, of a JSON object and load it in, in a Python dictionary. So you have all the options of the Python, Python, Python dictionary. So you can do, uh, values, keys, uh, so if I do it like that, for example, if I take the taxonomies that, <coughs> I will get all the keys, so all the um, uh, all the name of all the taxonomies. Um, and if I do the same for values, I get I get all the taxonomies. So if I do them like that, I will get so this one, the, so the zero is TLP at this point. So it's just like you get the taxonomy, and you can just play with it right away uh, without having to deal with any uh, JSON. Files. That's quite straightforward. And I had the same idea with uh, MISP events. Because when you have a MISP event, you also get a JSON file, and you may want to do the same similar thing. You want to be able to open your JSON file, change something, and push it back. And you want to make sure that everything you push back is a valid MISP event. So using uh, the description of, uh, of Alex, so the ETF uh, document of Alex, and a JSON schema, uh, I also, I do the same thing. So I load, I can load the MISP event, uh, and dump it again, and change stuff in between. So basically it's going to work like that. You import from PyMISP MISP event, uh, it's in the next branch. It's not, it's not merged in the main, in the master branch right now, but it will be merged like at the end of this, or maybe next week. Um, so you can see you load your, uh, you open your MISP event, then you load uh, you load an existing JSON dump, an existing dump, dump from one of your MISP events, and you can just edit, um, you can just edit anything, look at the content, uh, with a really Pythonic, in a really Pythonic way. Like you just, you just access your MISP event as a, an actual, um, JSON, an actual, um, Python object, which is, I find really cool. Um, and you also make sure that when you dump it, so again, if you do, if you do it like that, It's going to dump you um, a JSON, like a mod, uh, an actual valid um, MISP event you can import again in um, in MISP. So that's and that's a really good way. That's something we really wanted to implement. So full full is going to just dump everything again, 
JSON, uh, the JSON, the classic JSON dump is going to be something that you can up upload on one of your, of your instance. Uh, because there's some, some particular fields you don't want to re-upload again. If you, if you do some edits in some fields, you don't want to re-upload everything. But yeah, that's, that's the idea. So you can, you can do all that, uh, by just using, uh, completely normal Python code, um, without touching any kind of JSON, um, any kind of JSON files. Um, and again, it's implemented in a really similar way. Um, I load, I load all the attributes present in the, in the, in the JSON document. Uh, check, and I import it in a Python, with Python, uh, object. For example, when I have a, when I have a date, I will import it as a date time. So this way you can actually compare events. You can compare the date of different events using, like, uh, comparing times in, uh, in Python, which is also really cool. Um, but when I dump it again, I dump it as a text as it's expected in the standard. So that's fairly straightforward. And I also load everything as integers when I can, and dump it again back as, uh, as a format expected by, uh, by MISP. So all that stuff, it's like, it looks really big, but it's really just, uh, it's just a way to, to import a full, um, JSON object in a Python class. And do whatever you like with it afterward. Um, and to make sure that when I dump, I dump, that the dump is an actual valid, um, JSON object, I use, uh, I use a schema provided in, uh, in the MISP, um, repository and, um, compare it when I dump. And you will get a, you will get a warning if it's not, if it's not a valid, um, MISP object. Uh, this way you can also use MISP object in other tools without any problem. Like you can just get a MISP object, get all the fields you want using pure Python code without having to dig with, uh, with JSON and do whatever you like. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a really, that's something that I really wanted to, to do. And it's, like, it will be, it will be implemented. It will be merged upstream, like, merged in, uh, in the master branch, um, soon. So, yeah, like, that's, that's the next steps in, uh, in PyMISP. Um, I explained most of what I wanted to show. I mean, it's just, like, if you have any more questions or anything you would be interested in having in, um, to manage taxonomies in an other, tool or if you are interested in if there's some specific stuff you would like to have um, in um, in MISP in PyMISP that would that I'm also interested in yeah discussing about that. Uh, yeah my approach is really I want to do as le as least amount of work as I can when I actually play with the MISP event. So I have also now a lot we now have a lot of uh, default values. For example when you have an IP it's going to be automatically so the when type is an IP the um, the, in the, what's the, name again? Uh, category. the category will be automatically set to a network attribute. Um, it will be a, the two IDS will also be set. Basically, you have like a bunch of automatic fields. Like if you want to, you can you just have a function called add attribute, and everything is set. Um, no, not here. Uh, everything is set by default uh, without any. Um, oops, not here. Uh, without having to think about it. Because it's just like when you have too many fields, it's just a pain to deal with. So I just like add attribute. The only field, the only thing you need to have when you create a new attribute in a misp event is the type on the attribute itself. Everything else will be set automatically. So it's really, it's just, it makes your life way easier. Um, when you want to do that. Um, so yeah, that's. That's the main idea. Just making your life easier when you to, when you want to play with MISP stuff or stuff around MISP. Um, yeah.